Hello Foundation personnel, Knox again. Today we'll be taking a look at another SCP-001 proposal. The proposal we'll be covering today was submitted by QNTM? Not sure what kind of name that is, but... Anyways, further proposals will be covered in subsequent lectures. So, as always, let's begin. QNTM's proposal. The Lock. Item number, SCP-001. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-001 is to be kept locked along with all data pertaining to it inside the primary archival vault on sublevel 1 of Site 10. The vault is a custom manufactured, reinforced concrete and steel vertical octagonal prism. See Appendix U for full schematics. With a 2000 kilogram 0.9 meter thick time locked access portal in the ceiling. The time locking schedule should be classified and available only to Dr. Y. Mirsky. Access is conditional on three factor authorization, e.g., keycard, fingerprint, passphrase. SCP 001 is among the safest artifacts in the Foundation's possession, and these measures are primarily intended to prevent theft. Description SCP-001 is a smooth, black, perfectly ellipsoidal 15.1 cm by 15.4 cm by 16.5 cm onyx gemstone with a mottled white pattern. Wrapped around its exterior, encompassing its equator and both poles, is a complex and layered fractal filigree of gold metal. The gold is sculpted into broad strokes at what is now usually agreed to be the lower or south pole of the object, but with increasing latitude, the pattern becomes progressively more intricate. Near the north pole, also called the lock or singularity, see acquisition report below, the pattern complexity progresses beyond the capability of optical or electron beam microscopes to resolve. Further investigation is pending advances in microscopy technology. The gemstone continuously emits a small quantity, 34.5007 to 34.5010 milliwatts of thermal radiation in the microwave range. As a result, the gold filigree is warm to the touch. The white modeled areas emit fractionally more radiation than the black onyx areas. Other than this, SCP-001 is totally inert. It is opaque to all forms of electromagnetic and hard radiation, and so far indestructible. See log for Project Pluto below. Its onyx gold composition is guessed from a visual inspection, since taking samples for chemical analysis has proven impossible. Project Pluto Master Log The following experiments have failed to open SCP-001. Conventional lockpicking Brute force assault with a hammer, chisel, sledgehammer, bolt cutters, welding torch, bandsaw, etc. Sustained heating to 5000 degrees centigrade in industrial furnace, the artifact reflected all thermal energy, did not increase in temperature. Direct application of an industrial cutting laser, approximately 160 kilowatts per centimeter squared concentrated on the lock, artifact reflected all energy. Compression in vice, car crusher, hydraulic diamond face press, all destroyed. Application of corrosive acids and other highly oxidizing compounds, no reaction. Detonation of plastic and solid explosives up to 0.5 kilotons TNT equivalent at point-blank range, no effect, detonation of a 15 kiloton TNT equivalent atomic warhead at point-blank range, authorization granted retroactively by Dr. Mirsky, no effect. Project Pluto is to be immediately terminated, Dr. Hack. Project Pluto is ongoing with the full support of Foundation resources, Dr. Mirsky. SCP-001 Acquisition Report The earliest record of SCP-001 is in the handwritten journal of the minor Scottish aristocrat Sir Edwin Young. 3rd Baronet, 1611-1677. As was customary at the time, Young kept a cabinet of curiosities, a small room of artifacts of undetermined provenance such as sculptures, preserved creatures, and trinkets. Young's journal includes references to his acquisition in 1654 of an bound jewel of onyx and filigree gold of fineness beyond rational statement while traveling across the Mesopotamian desert. The journal indicates that SCP-001 was found buried in the ruin of a bitter, blasted place, older than days, or what Young took to be a temple to a fearsome death god. SCP-001 was found encased in stone at the center of four enormous runic stones. 
Young's journal includes a sketch of the most readable side of the most well-preserved stone, but he was unable to read the runes or find a scholar who could translate them. Young's account of his journey to the location of the rune is incomplete. It has not yet been located. Young's Selections of Curious Provenance lay in storage for several centuries after he died. In 1805, his descendants donated SCP-001 to the Scottish National Museum in Edinburgh. The curators of the museum regarded SCP-001 as an ancient, fragile, and priceless example of ancient Sumerian metalworking. They therefore failed to discover its anomalous warmth, its indestructibility, or its impossible microscopic scale construction. They were, however, able to identify the runes in Young's sketch as tertiary Sumerian cuneiform, circa 3400 BCE. Only a partial translation is possible. With loss and we slash I, a noun, apaket, probably a proper noun, on this ending or finality, joy and permanence, possibly protection. Mr. McCandlish, who performed the translation, noted, this appears to be some sort of incantation or spell of containment. Apaket is the name of whatever is imprisoned within the gemstone. SCP-001 was finally placed on semi-permanent display in 1949. In 2003, Foundation staff observed that the mottled white patterns on the surface of SCP-001 resembled the cosmic microwave background, a pattern of microwaves encompassing the entire Enzirule universe, as mapped by NASA's Wilkinson Microwave and Isotrophy Probe earlier this year. Closer inspection showed the two patterns to be identical. SCP-001, along with Baronet Young's journal, was immediately purchased by a Foundation front organization and transferred to Site-10, where Dr. Q. Hack and Dr. Y. Mirsky performed initial routine analysis. Research continues under the auspices of Dr. Mirsky, Dr. Hack having recently left the Foundation. Young's journal also includes several detailed sketches of SCP-001. In one of the sketches, a small ornate object resembling a key is shown fitted into its North Pole. The key has not been recovered. Well, that's all for today's lesson. Nice to get an SCP with the safe designation around here. Foundation really loves its terrifying creatures. Hmm. Well, I guess it's better for them to be locked up in sites like this one than running around out there. <sighs> I wish I could run around there again. Well, until next we meet, Nox. And don't forget to follow me on social media. I am at NoxAlice on Twitter. Um, my main YouTube channel, NoxAlice, where I make videos on gaming. That's mainly things like retrospectives, uh, histories of games, things like that. And also my Twitch, where I stream everything from modern titles all the way to retro games on the original hardware.